um, it was Christmas Day morning, so like most families were excited. I was up early because I was probably the most excited of all, running around a bit hyper. They're getting older now, the girls, they, they seem to lay in bed a lot more. I liked it when they got up early, wanted to run, do the presents and all that. So I was more, like, more or less trying to force them to get up. But then I became ill quite rapidly and everyone knew it was a bit, it was, it was rather serious. I've actually heard in the distance the sirens of the medic did make me feel a lot better, at least, you know, in a sense that someone's going to be able to treat me or tell me exactly what was going on. But yes, that was, that was about the point where in and out of consciousness. I remember the paramedic first responder, Natasha. I remember her arriving and then I went into Natasha and I said, you know, is everything all right? She, she very calmly said to me, no, he's having a heart attack. It starts right from when the 999 call was made. So it's important that our control room staff are a key part of the overall package because they're the first interaction that the ambulance service usually has with someone who's dialing in for someone who's in cardiac arrest. We were very lucky. We started at 6.30 and we had a call from our control, our radio people, who actually told us that um, Steve was having a heart attack. The first responder, Natasha, who was on the car, actually on the scene, had actually already done the ECG, which confirmed that Steve was having the, uh, the heart attack. So we were pre-prepared. I thought this must be, it was, it was too bad. It wasn't a lot of pain. But uh, as soon as she started strapping me up, I knew what she was checking for. The, uh, the graph didn't look that good. And that's when she told us, that, yes, I was having a heart attack and multiple heart attacks after that. If there could be a more textbook picture of somebody having a heart attack, it would be Steve. He was very sweaty, very pale, in a lot of pain, discomfort. And the ECG was probably the worst ECG I've ever seen in my life. As we was on the road, I remember Steve saying, I feel funny, I feel funny. And at that point, the heart machine just flatlined, I can remember, and that was just the worst. You know, you see it on Casualty, on the telly, and all these different programmes, you never think it's gonna be you. When you're in the back, all we can really do is monitor the patient. So we had him hooked up so we could monitor his heart rate at all times. We'd already given pain relief and uh, it was simply a case of trying to sort of reassure Steve, reassure Stella as well, because she was almost as much of a patient to us because, you know, obviously it must have been awful for her. I actually remember telling Steve not to worry and if I look concerned, he should be concerned and with that he went to cardiac arrest. At that point the ambulance stopped in the middle of the road. The gentleman driving jumped and they used the defibrillators. I couldn't watch because I thought if I didn't watch, it wouldn't happen, it would go away. It, he died in front of us and it was just, it was horrendous. There's been two big impacts, and that is the continued focus on defibrillation, where it's appropriate, and the enormous focus on quality of chest compressions. And I think they have been the two big drivers to increase survival. The machine then, after I think it was about seven minutes, the machine then started with a heartbeat. On arrival at the London Chest Hospital, we cardiac arrested again. And I kept thought, what am I going to tell the kids? So Steve had had a cardiac arrest out in the community. London Ambulance arrived. They have successfully resuscitated Steve. And then on his ECG, he had inferior, an inferior STEMI. So as is the policy, London Ambulance Service brought, him, brought Steve direct to us. 
while we were assessing him and getting him ready to go to the cath lab for his angioplasty um, and his angiogram, he arrested again. And the ambulance guys, they were just fantastic. They didn't leave me at all because at that point, I didn't know whether Steve was dead, alive, whether he was gonna survive. The last I saw was Steve being taken through to have the um, angioplasty, I believe it's called. So this is the occluded artery that we can see here. We've actually now stopped the process of infarction because what has happened here is we have blood flow down that artery. Everything was just so surreal. And I think made worse by the fact it was Christmas morning. Because inside of me I was thinking, when he was arresting, I remember thinking, we'll never be able to have Christmas. If he doesn't pull through, we'll never ever be able to have Christmas again. Never. Christmas will always be the day that he died. So Christmas day was just, Steve was the only person who got a Christmas dinner that day. Um, so he got that in the hospital. I got home that night about eight o'clock. Um, by the time I got home, Holly had to call the Christmas tree down. We just didn't want, didn't want to know. The whole lot had been taken been down. cancelled, Christmas was cancelled. After what seemed forever, which I believe was only about 45 minutes, um, one of the guys said, we're just gonna go and check. And as he opened the door, I heard Steve call my name, which that will stay with me forever hearing him call. 